In this class, we'll continue our discussion of probability distributions by looking at the binomial distribution. We'll use this class to help transition ourselves from, the, from descriptive statistics to uh, a consideration of hypothesis testing and inferential statistics. And the binomial distribution is the probability distribution for discrete dichotomous events. So the events we have in mind are sometimes de described as Bernoulli trials. Uh, for example, coin flips, in which there are two independent mutually exclusive outcomes. We can use the uh, binomial distribution to test how likely an event is to have occurred, or we can test whether or not an event is random or the result of chance alone, which is essentially what we uh, do when we do hypothesis testing. Here is a picture of a binomial distribution. Notice how different it is from the normal distribution, which is a probability distribution for a continuous variable. Here we focus on the probability for a specific discrete outcome, and we do not consider the area under the curve. This table could be used to determine the possible outcomes of five Bernoulli trials or five consecutive, say, coin flips. Uh, let's apply this table to test the outcome of five coin flips. Let's say I got four heads out of five slips. What would be the probability of getting four heads out of five flips? Uh, looking at the table, we see that the probability of four out of five is 0.1563 and that the probability of five heads uh, out of five flips would be 0 0.0313. Before going to the next slide, see if you can answer this question. What is the probability of receiving four or five heads out of five coin flips? The answer is P is equal to 0.1876. Here you would use the additive rule and sum the probability for 4 and the probability for 5. Here is another question. What is the probability of flipping 4 heads out of 5 and then flipping 5 out of 5? The answer is P equal to 0 0.0049. Here we would use the multiplicative rule and multiply the probabilities for 4 and 5.
so our problem then is to find the probability of two things occurring in a series of four, namely the Giants winning the Western Division two times in four years. To solve the problem, we need to define a few things. First, we need to determine how many combinations, or two things in four, will satisfy the, the desired outcome. So the Giants could win the first and second year, or they could win the first and fourth, and so on, all of which would satisfy the, uh, the requirement of winning two out of four. When we apply the formula for determining the number of combinations that would work, we come up with a total of six combinations that would satisfy the outcome. Next, we need to determine the probability of a success in any one year. Because there are five teams in the Western Division, the probability of the Giants winning in any one year is 1 over 5 or 0.2. Finally, we need to determine the probability of failure in any one year. Because we are dealing with mutually exclusive events, the probability of a success added to the probability of failure is 1. So in this problem, Q, or the probability of failure, is equal to 1 minus 0.2, or 0.8. So ultimately, our formula becomes the probability of two things is equal to 6, the number of combinations, times 0.2 squared, times 0.8 squared. Um, so here we have plugged the numbers into the formula. Uh, and we learn that the probability of the Giants winning the division two years out of four is 0.153. In the previous slide, we learned that the probability of the Giants uh, winning the division two years out of four is 0.1536, if chance is operating. Essentially, what the binomial distribution and other probability distributions allow us to determine is the probability the outcome uh, or the event occurred by chance alone. Uh, in this problem, the probability is not in the unusual range uh, that we usually think of in our field. So we might conclude that although the probability is low of the Giants winning twice, it could actually happen by chance. But let's take a more extreme circumstance. Let's say we want to know the probability of the Giants winning the division three years out of four. In this problem, uh, the number of combinations that satisfy the outcome de decrease from six to four, uh, but the probability of success and failure each year remains the same. Because the, because the combinations uh, decrease, the probability will be lower than before. So plugging the numbers into the formula, we learn that the probability is equal to 0 0.0256, which is less than 0 0.05. Based on this finding, we might reject the notion that this was just a chance occurrence because the probability was less than 0 0.05 and instead conclude that something other than chance was at play, perhaps we would conclude that the Giants were systematically better than the competition. This is the same logic we uh, will use when we turn our attention to hypothesis testing and determining whether the difference in treatment outcome between the treatment group and the control group is just due to chance or due to the fact that the treatment is actually superior to no treatment at all.